young players that hope to make the national team, a few players who have been there, like Sergei Svetlov. Against Team Canada, Dave King's brand new national team. He's had to break everything down to the foundation and start again after the 88 Olympics. The goaltender tonight for the Soviet Union is a 24-year-old who plays for a team con called Automobile East in the first division, Andrei Zuev. He played last night and won 4-3. His backup is Alexei Chervikov, who lost 5-4 to Canada in the exhibition game three nights ago in Prince Albert. Canada will rest its hopes on the pads of 28-year-old Warren Skoronetsky from Winnipeg. He's played in the National Hockey League. You'll remember him from Chicago. A brief stop in Edmonton. He's backed up by Randy Hanch. He can be hot. This guy can capture lightning in a bottle, and he's going to have to tonight. Well, no doubt he will be tested early, and usually with Skoronetsky, you can tell whether or not he is ready to play. He's been excited about this one all day and ready to play against the Soviets tonight. There's a full house in this building that seats 7,700. They'll pack as many as 9,000 in here for some hockey games, some of them standing. Saskatoon Blades of the Western League play here, an average 7,000 fans. And it's a building that could be expanded to seat 16,500 should the day come when Saskatoon gets a team in the National Hockey League. Right now, it's hosting the Saskatchewan Cup. And the official for tonight's game, the referee is Brad Howard from Regina. Mike Poietta is the linesman along with Kevin Blosky. I would think the Canada are going to try to set the pace of their game very early. Right off the opening faceoff, Wickenheiser taking it. They have got to be on the move. Canada will start with Doug Wickenheiser at center, as you mentioned. Dave Saunders on the left wing and Mark Juris on the right side. The defense of Gord Hines and Ken Loveson. The Soviets will start a line you may recognize. Alexander Simak is a national team member who's at center. He plays for Moscow Dynamo. Sergei Svetlov is the right winger, one of the fastest players in hockey. And Nikolai Borchevsky is number eight, the left winger. The defense of Popekin and Mikolchev. Doug Wickenheiser moving in, and the Canadians are offside just 15 seconds into this game. Well, Vladimir Vasiliev has got a host of experience. I mean, not only as a player and coach, but certainly when it, you take a look at the overall picture, this guy knows all about Canadian hockey. He started way back in those early Canada Cups as a player. Had to take a couple of years off. Yes, he is the Vasiliev who coached Team Canada at the brawl in Czechoslovakia. The, he coached uh, the Soviet Union in the brawl in Czechoslovakia at the World Junior Tournament. And was suspended for a time, but is back now. Sergei Svetlov to Nikolai Porchensky. His shot is deflected high in the air and off the glass. The Soviets in after the puck. Wickenheiser takes his man. Hines has his. Ken Lumpson from Peace River, Alberta, gets the puck to Mark Juris, number 19. Juris flips the defense and goes down as he goes after the puck. Sergei Svetlov, 27-year-old member of Moscow Dynamo to Alexander Simak, and he's pushed down by Brian Tuck. And Warren Skorodinsky pounces on the puck. He's allowed to do that under international rules. He can freeze the puck anywhere. I think you're going to see an awful lot of stoppages in play tonight. Juice, don't forget, you got to move the puck sometimes in that neutral zone. You got a tendency to always want to carry it through that zone, okay? Now, all right? Maybe it's well, it. If they get behind, it could very well be scary because if they have to open it up against this Soviet hockey club, the Soviets will pick Canada apart. We're certainly going to be able to hear King D or Dave King's strategy tonight. Absolutely. He does wear a microphone tonight, so we'll be eavesdropping at the Canadian bench throughout the evening. That should be very interesting indeed. Chris Draper is number nine for Team Canada, one of its youngest members. It's 17 year old, 17 years old, and he's chasing Albert Baldwin. Now here's a shot at Kornetsky, made the save of Igor Nikita. And the Canadians had a chance to come back three on one, but the pass was too far in front of Steve Nemeth, and they'll change on the fly. But there was that trailer again, and he got a great shot away right from the slot. Bartolnov is number 18 in after the puck. And Warren Skorodinsky covers up almost two minutes into the first period of this Saskatchewan Cup round-robin game, and there's no score. 
Horace Gordensky told Roger and I before the game that he said, watch out, there's going to be a lot of stoppages in play tonight. He'll be hanging on to the puck a lot. You want to kind of slow the Soviet tempo down, but at the same hand, you can't afford to slow your pace down. But Canada can't hope to match them in pace tonight. They just can't do it. This is a very good skating team that the Soviets have sent over. So then I guess it's important that the Canadians set the pace. Gary Emmons. It's number 15 carrying the puck to center. He's with Mike Muller and Richard Haidu. Vladimir Yeryoma to Sergei Osipov and in over the blue line. And the Canadians turn the Soviets back. There's a penalty coming up against Team Canada. There's a high stick out of that neutral zone. Ostapov is number 23. Back to the point. Matitsin couldn't hold the puck in. And Valerie Sheriev is back to get it. The Soviets have their goal empty on this delayed penalty call and the extra attacker on the ice. Pass up the middle is touched by Evans. And the high sticking call is made. It'll be Mike Moeller for Team Canada going to the penalty box, and the Soviet power play will go to work. Well, it was in the neutral ice area, and it looked rather harmless at the time. Unfortunately for Moeller, it was right in front of the referee's eyes. Sometimes these Soviet power plays can be a thing of beauty to watch when they start to move the puck around. They'll use that quick one-touch passing and then try to hit a man cutting in front of the net for a tip on the move, and they're experts at it. And as usual with these teams from the Soviet Union and Czechoslovakia, they just rotate their five-man units, so there's no special power play. This is just a regular unit on the ice, but a pretty good one. Centered by Igor Mastenikov, who's had some national team experience. He's number 12, and he's after the puck right now. Mastenikov, the point for Bonayinkov. Now they'll start to move it around. Two men in the slot. And the puck was rifled down the ice by Team Canada. The Soviets now will change on the fly. And they'll send on their big line from Moscow Dynamo. C-Mac, Korchevsky, and Svetlov. 110 to go in the penalty to Mike Bowler. Steve Nemeth and Todd Screeby, the penalty killers up front. Brian Tutt and James Gasso are back. Leona back to the point for Popekin blindly, and there was nobody there. Sergei Svetlov can't get up ahead of steam as he was checked by Steve Nemeth. Now he's checked by James Gasso. Korchevsky had to get the puck into the middle for C-Mac, and he couldn't get a shot away. 40 seconds left in the penalty. Canada's pursuing the puck well, especially in their own end zone, and they've been breaking up the Soviet plays. They've been very physical, too. Good body checks. Korchevsky. Smallest player by a long shot on the team. Back at the point. Popekin to Mikulczyk. C-Mac into the middle. He's checked, and the Canadians are doing a great job filling this penalty. 15 seconds to go in it. Interesting. Against the Czechs, Canada seemed to lay back and play a very disciplined, tight box in their own end zone. But it seems against the Soviets right now, they're really pressing the puck carrier. There's a shot from the point that ripped off the post. Igor Nikit took the shot. Muller was out of the penalty box. The Canadians are back at full strength. Soviets are over one of the power play. There's no score in the game. We're five minutes in. Bostrikov took the shot. Gord Hines made the save, and the puck gets outside the blue line. Nikit. Bartolov can't handle the pass. Now Nikit moves it over to his defensive partner, Basalgi. And in comes Sandra Mulgan. Gord Hines. Checked by Bartolo. Dave Saunders gets the puck. Ahead to Doug Wickenheiser. Mark Juris is the third member of this Canadian line, and he's going for the net. Couldn't get a hold of the puck. Tried to center, and the puck went off the back of the goal. Juris has got some speed, and he bounced through the defense and created an opportunity. There's a breakaway lead pass that bounced over the stick of the Soviet forward, Kvartalna. In come the Canadian four-checkers, Richard Haidu and Gary Emmons. But they don't get to the puck in time. 
is an icing call against Team Canada. A spirit of start for Canada. Welcome back to Saskatchewan Place in Saskatoon. I'm Jim Houston with Gary Green, Roger Nielsen, and Jim Van Horn. Glad to have you with us for this Saskatchewan Cup round robin game. A must-win game for Canada, and they must win by two goals to make Sunday's final against Czechoslovakia. Richard Haidu from Victoria, B.C. Former Buffalo Sabres fine hand is in doing some poor checking of the penalty here. A slashing call, and it's against the Soviets. Looks like Vladimir Yeri Omen is going to the penalty box for slashing, so Canada gets a power play. Well, with the faceoff deep in the Soviet end zone, this will be a good chance for Canada if they can win that draw to gain possession early and then get set up. Uh, Greener, you mentioned earlier that Canada was very aggressive penalty killing. Well, that's certainly a trait of this team, as we saw the other night. Uh, Canada's going to try to spread out, and they're going to try to have their their wingers really wide to draw the Soviets out. There you saw the slashing pen penalty on Yeri Oman. Right in the neutralized area. And here's a steal and a decent recovery by Team Canada. Now they're coming. Gary Emmons coming back. Gord Hines, number four, playing the point. Soviets get the puck out. Maslenikov dumped the puck in. And the penalty killers are changing up. Gary Emmons celebrating his 25th birthday today. Leading the power play up the ice. Richard Haidu and Jeff Wenis are out with him. That'll be an interference call against Team Canada. The goal was knocked off its moorings. And Haidu's going to the penalty box for interference and so much for the power play. Well, that was a really bad penalty on Canada's part. Watch Haidu. He's right in the middle of your screen. He wasn't playing the puck. He just runs the Soviet defenseman right into the net, knocks it off its moorings, and ends up nullifying Canada's power play. Canada's got to remember, and I'm sure Dave King has reiterated it over and over again, discipline has got to be the key as well as aggressiveness in tonight's game. It was a tough call, and he was being screened off by a Soviet defender, and he kind of pushed him out of the way, and he ended up going into the net, but I didn't think that was a call that had to be called at that point. Look at it, So five aside hockey here. Adrian Plavsic is an 18-year-old on defense, number seven, playing with Ward Hines. Puck is given away almost to Alexander Seamack, who's at the side of that, trying to stuff it in, and Skoradinsky blocked the way. Soviets almost took advantage of an error by the Canadian defenseman. Gord Hines dumping the puck in. Gloved ahead by the Soviets. Hines is a good defenseman. He's very mobile. He is a good offensive defenseman. But he cannot afford to give up those type of bad giveaways in his own end zone because you know the Soviet team will capitalize on them. Canada was trying kind of a European or Soviet breakout. They where uh, the forward comes back behind the defense and they drop it back. But I guess the Soviets are well familiar with that because they just picked it off. So you built some speed. Now the Soviets racing down the ice. Bartolnov, number 18, centers it, picked off nicely by Mark Juris. 40 seconds left in the penalty against Yeri Ullman of the Soviet Union, and then the Soviets will be on a power play. Igor Nikitin carries the puck over the line and chases it to the end boards. Cleared by Skorodensky to Mark Juris out of Rensselaer Polytechnical Institute, made up of Burlington, and he gets the puck down the ice to lead pass for Wickenheiser, didn't connect. Icing call against Canada. Boy, if Juris could have hit Wickenheiser with that pass. Wickenheiser was in all alone. He was way up at the red line. 
That pass was just about three feet off, though. Mark won an NCAA championship with RPI, and he had teammates like Adam Oates, who plays for Detroit, John Carter of Boston, Craig Meenhouse, who had a cup of coffee in Boston, a pretty good team out of RPI, and Juris was part of it. He's well accustomed to European-style hockey. He played the last couple of years in Finland. Eight minutes gone, first period. No score, the Soviets and Team Canada. Five seconds left in the Soviet penalty. Borshevsky moves in and snaps one on Skoronetsky, who made the save and held on. Luxton gave up the puck in the neutral ice, and once again, if you cough up the pucks, then boy, the Soviets are gonna be right on them. You see, he just lost control of it. And it was a good thing for Lovson that Moeller was back. Well, Canada can't afford those kind of miscues. They gotta play almost a perfect game to win tonight. Penalty's over. Gary Ullman's back on the ice. The Soviets have a power play for 30 seconds. And they have control. Sheriev with a shot, and that deflected out of the park. Good block by Moeller. He just came off the left wing boards practically, slid out, and deflected that puck up over the glass. The way the Soviets just turned them over. There you see the shot there, and a puck tipped right up high. It was a good block. But the Soviets, as you said earlier, he would just send out the, the units up. And Dave King was saying today that he hoped on their power play it would be their third and fourth unit that would be up yeah. <laughs> and not the good line with uh, Semla. Kovalev, he's a good scorer. Seventh in scoring in the Soviet Union right now. There's a penalty coming up again against Team Canada. They're in their own zone, and now they'll be shorthanded again. As referee Brad Howard sends Doug Wickenheiser to the box for high sticking. Well, it's pretty obvious early going in this hockey game that you better keep the sticks down. If you don't, you're going to sit in the penalty box for too much of tonight's game. Early in the game, at any rate, Howard is not going to let anything go. Well, the face-off here is really important because uh, Canada still has two men in the box, don't they? I thought they had a man in there for 15 seconds, but it doesn't show on the clock. At any rate, they got to win this draw, and then they'll have time to get their man back out. The clock showed that the penalty had expired, but you're right, Rog, the man didn't come back on, so Canada is still two men short, and now they're putting it back up on the clock. This is a brand new clock, so we'll forgive them if there are some problems with it. They just got it in here in time for this tournament. 14 seconds, we're told, is the time remaining in the penalty to Richard Haidu, so the Soviets have a two-man advantage. Nemeth is going to take the draw for Canada. This is the big line. This is what Dave King feared. The Soviets have their line of C-Mac, Svetlov, and Borshevsky from Moscow Dynamo on the ice. Especially five on three. C-Mac won the draw. Kopikin on the point. Kopikin gets it back. Mikulchik fanned on the shot. Ten seconds left in the first penalty. C-Mac, Svetlov, backhander, he scores! And the Soviets lead one to nothing as Sergei Svetlov backhands the puck in by Skorodensky. Well, a scramble in front of Skorodensky. Canada can't come up with the puck. You can see that, first of all, Hines was looking for it. He's still in front, but he goes down. He doesn't intercept that pass. He had already committed himself, and Skorodensky had as well. That just left Svetlov, and he knew exactly what to do. Skorodensky commits himself. He goes down. Svetlov goes high with the puck. A New Jersey draft pick in 88, Sergei Svetlov is 27 years old, one of the oldest guys on this team. And that goal came with Haidu still in the penalty box, so he gets out, and there's still a 151 left in the Wickenheiser penalty. So the Soviet big line stays on the power play. Svetlov into the middle, his drop pass is picked up. Alexander Simak draws the only assist on Svetlov's second goal of this tournament at 8.39. Simak 
pulled down, and everybody in the building looked at the referee, but he didn't make the call. Well, you see how far Skordensky went out to stop that puck with guys like C. McEnam on the ice. He's going to make awfully sure that whenever that puck is inside Canada's end zone right now, they're going to slow it down as much as possible. C. Mac was the player that in the 87 Canada Cup, in the first game of that three-game final, scored the winner, the 6-5 overtime game, to put the Soviets out front. They, of course, lost the tournament. C. Mac was a big player for the Soviet Union. He was outstanding in the World Junior Tournament in 86 as well, and we've got another penalty coming up. This time against the Soviets. Good! Now we're four on four! Gutty call! Oh, gutty call! Titoff! Get him bench in, Titoff! red, too! Uh-oh. Now Dave King has got a bench minor. Well, there's the initial infraction. Dave King felt it was just oh, more or less an even-up call, and he's he's given it to him. Unfortunately, the referee has given Dave King a two-minute bench minor. But I don't think he deserved him. You can yell a few things like that. He didn't swear at him. He didn't stall. He just told him, uh, just let him know. And uh, you got to be able to take a little when you're a referee. This guy's going to take it over the game. Boyce will go over and serve the bench minor. Maybe he's trying to show he's not impartial. Yeah, oh, yeah. T Top gets a holding penalty. Dave King gets a bench minor. And it'll be four skaters against three for the Soviet Union. I agree with Roger. I don't think there's anything wrong with keeping the referee on his toes letting them know whether or not you're pleased or displeased with a particular call. And again, as long as you don't swear at them and as long as you don't really make a mockery of the situation, most of the time, refs will let it go. This guy'd be calling bench miners all night if he was in the NHL, <laughs> call that sort of thing. <laughs> Maslenikov, the side of the net, Leonov shot the puck wide. Soviets move the puck around. Leon up number 11. Checked by Lovson. Here's Mes Mesmenikov, number 12. Trying to beat it in front. Leonov couldn't tip it. Mike Moeller's trying to get the puck outside the blue line and can't. Maslenikov plays the puck back to Fedotov. Fedotov gets it back again, fakes the shot, and then passed it high to Maslenikov. Back on the point. Monaika to Maslenikov. Centering pass. Leona fan of the shot in front. Skoronetsky pokes it away. Fedota fires the shot. Great save by Skoronetsky. Excellent save by Skoronetsky, but he's got to make sure in this game that he stands up. He's been going down a little bit too much, and boy, the Soviets will pick you apart in close. Here's the shot. Skordansky comes out. He knows that he's got Leonov right on his doorstep, so he cannot afford to give up any rebound. He comes out, he challenges, and makes a save. Watch Moeller right here. Moeller made an excellent play, just lifted the Soviet player's stick, and may have saved the goal. Skoro's been busy. Canada's been outshot eight to nothing. Bartalna, back on the point. Now they work it in the inside. Nikit, number 24. Feeds the puck into Vostrikov. Trying one time it as they went across ice. Wickenheiser's out of the penalty box. Canada's now back at even strength. They're four skaters aside right now. Bartalna, number 18, breaks for the net. Shot the puck wide. Boy, has he got good speed. Excellent acceleration. He just caught the Canadian defense flat-footed. 22-year-old Albert Mulgan. Upset at the line, and he's a little upset over it. Gord Hines with a drop pass. Here's Mike Muller for Team Canada. Snaps one. There's the first shot on goal for Team Canada. And it comes 11 minutes into this game. Gord Hines, the defenseman, is in deep. 
Soviets lead one to nothing. 8.40 to play in the first period. The penalties have expired, so the teams are now back at full and even strength. As Boyce and great speed. They'll burn you wide. Adrian Plavsic. Wickenheiser, Juris, and Saunders are up front. Doug Wickenheiser, 27-year-old, played over 500 NHL games, gets the puck over the blue line. Sheriff moved it right back up. Here's Kovalev. Crisscrossing and knocked down. Moving up with Sheriff, but he lost his stick, and he'll try and kick the puck back to the point. Kovalev, number 15, moves in. The Otsi pop, he's knocked down by Wickenheiser. Gary Oman, number nine, goes for the front of the net. And that puck drifted dangerously by the post. Pass for Dave Saunders at center. He's hauled down, and there'll be a penalty against the Soviets. The penalty will be against Valery Sheriev. He'll go off for holding, make that hooky. And we'll be back with the power play. Calgary draft pick out of Medicine Hat will be the centerman. Gary Emmons, number 15, will be out there with Mark Juris. Juris and Emmons are the leading scorers on Team Canada. Hines is the top scoring defenseman. He's on the left point. Greg Andrusak is on the right. There's a shot from the slot. Juris got a shot away. Zuev got a piece of it. Loose puck at the side of the net. Cleared down the ice by Alexander Simak. 135 left in the penalty to Popekin. Jeff Wenis played last year in Salt Lake City in the International League. Dumped the puck in. Sheriev is back. Gets some help from Cmac trying to clear it. Sheriev. Long lead pass is off the stick. Of Sergei Svetlov. Now here's Jeff Wenis to Mark Juris. Tried to pass it off. The pass was intercepted by Svetlov. Seven minutes to go, first period, 1-0 Soviets. Jeff Wenis on the Canadian power play. To Juris. Centering pass, Wenis shoots it. Deflected into the stands. That'll stop play with 53 seconds left in the Soviet penalty. I think Canada's got the right idea anyway. When they get possession of that puck, inside of the end zone of the Soviets, they are shooting pretty quickly. They've got to go for the net. They've got to shoot every chance they get tonight if they are going to win this hockey game, and at least by a couple of goals. Canadians win the draw. Plastic moves to the middle, shoots it, scores! One more time. does exactly that. He just pulls it back and lets it go. Hopes for the best. Just trying to put it on net. <laughs> no question about it. It was weaving in order to find its way to the net. Almost as though the puck had eyes. Looked like a Charlie Huff knuckleball finding its way through all those players and into the net. Adrian Plastic. 18-year-old drafted by St. Louis in the second round of the 88 draft out of the University of New Hampshire from Montreal has given Canada the 1-1 one -one tie to the start over again against the Soviets, a power play goal. See if that gives Canada a big lift. Steve Nemeth and Doug Wickenheiser drew assists at 13-19 on the goal by Adrian Plapson. Mark Juris for Team Canada took a shot as he went across the line. Now he takes another shot on the goalie, and Zuhan stopped that. Juris to the point. It's a penalty coming up against the Soviets in a penalty-filled first period. Referee Brad Howard will call another one, a high-sticking call, and the Soviets will be a man short again. I think he got to get on another high-sticking call before that because Juris got a stick right in the face. 
you see. Sergei Vostrikov goes over to serve the penalty. So Zuev gets it for high stick. Shot from the point is stopped by Zuev and he holds on. Once again, Flavzik gets that puck. He scored once already just by throwing it at the net. He's not going to waste any time setting it up again. Just throw it towards the net, see what will happen. And again, Canada with the right attitude. Go for the net. And right now, they almost took to the face-off without Zuev being ready. Flavzik knocks the puck down. He and Brian Tutt are the point men. Doug Wickenheiser's up front with Juris and Nimmin. And the puck is frozen, so they'll stop play with 1.36 to go in the penalty. A 1-1 tie. Sergei Svetlov has scored for the Soviet Union. Adrian Plavsic for Canada, both power play goals. Wickenheiser's only problem in a game like this, I mean, he's got the right attitude right now. He wants to develop, he wants to get better, but speed is the real factor. If he's going to improve his offensive play and get it back to the way it used to be when he played in the Western Hockey League here, then he has got to pick up the pace because he looks a little slow of foot out there. He played for the Regina Pats and yeah. many times visited Saskatoon, but not in this building, in the old arena downtown. This is brand spanking new, just 10 months old. The old arena's still standing. Soviets get possession and shoot the puck down the ice off the draw. Warren Skorodinsky will play it for Adrian Plavsen. Now to Brian Tuck. He'll dump the puck in. In on the fly is Juris. The Soviets get to it first. Wickenheiser, though, took his man. Back in the point. Touch shot. Deflected in front. And the puck went wide of the net. Osipov at center. Gary Oman in with a shot, and that's deflected to the corner. Now just a minute left in the penalty against Suev being served by Bostrikov. Mark Juris leads the Canadian rush on the power play. Stopped by Sheriev. Valery Sheriev shoots the puck down the ice. Canadians change up their power play unit. Jeff Wenis is on the ice with Todd Streeby, who will likely go for the front of the net, and Gary Evans, who just knocked down the linesman. James Gasso to Gord Hines, pokes the puck in. Popekin is trying to move it out, and he gets some help now from Sergei Svetlov. 25 seconds left in the penalty as the Soviets are called offside. The Canadian defense know that on one-on-one -on -one situations, two-on-two, -two, you've really got to play the puck carrier close. Plafsik did that very well on a one-on-one. -on -one. You can't give them too much room. They've got quick acceleration. Great puck handling skills. They can slip it through your feet and off they go. Dave King is a master at preparing his players for playing against the Soviet team. Come on, come on. 4.19 to play in the first period. Our first intermission, Jim Van Horn will be in conversation with young Chris Draper, a 17-year-old on this Canadian national team. And we'll have a feature on some of the graduates and the graduates of the national team program. Roger will be along with highlights as well. First intermission coming up. Just five seconds left in the Soviet penalty. Bostrikov's back on the ice. The Soviets are after the puck. C-Mac for Svetlov. Hines is there to pick off the pass. Hammonds, number 15, to Jeff Wentz. Can't get the shot away. Oleg Mikulchik. Up the middle for Alexander Simak, number 27. Threw it onto the wing to Vostrikov. Centering pass, tipped towards the net, and held up by Craig Andrusak, who just made the catch and held on. 3.24 left in the first period, a 1-1 tie. We'll be back with more on the Saskatchewan Cup from Saskatoon. With his man. Draw. Dave Saunders barges out of his own zone. The pass into the middle. Muller scores! Mike Muller! Great work by Saunders. 
to Moeller, and Canada has the lead. Holy doodles, I don't think I've ever seen Mike Moeller skate that fast. He just took off. Saunders did the work along the boards. Great effort, but look at Moeller. He just takes off down the middle of the ice and then a good low shot. A big goal for Canada. Mike Moeller, one of the veterans on this team at 26 years old, hasn't scored a lot this season. That's only his seventh goal for Team Canada this year, his first of this tournament, and it's the proverbial big one. Back come the Soviets. They're down by one. Canada must win by two tonight. There's a shot on goal that Skordensky kicked wide. Nikita, the defenseman, pinches in to go after the puck. Vostrakov is checked by Lumpson. And Chris Draper moved the puck out to center. Canada doing a good job once again. They can keep the momentum in the Soviets' end zone and force, but in their own end zone, if there's any problem whatsoever, just dump it out. Take a whistle, do whatever you've got to do, but slow the pace down in your own end zone. Try to keep it in the opposition's end zone, the Soviets. Soviets ice the puck for the first time. Leaves dropping on the Canadian bench. Mike Moeller was there on your screen. He scored the goal from Saunders at 16.44. Two and a half to go in the first period. Sheriff up the middle. The pass was intended for Andrei Kovalev. Down the ice and Skordensky plays it. Ian Boyce out of the University of Vermont, number five, goes up the left wing and is stopped by Sheriff. Back the other way, Sergei Osipov, number 23, puts on the brakes, feeds the puck into the middle. Kovalev was checked. Canadians are doing a great job of just staying with their men, not leaving the trailer open. Nobody's getting free in the slot right now. And they're going to have to do that all night long. A mistake will cost them dearly, and they have to win by two. And they know how important it is right now, with just a minute and 50 seconds remaining in this first period, to come out of this period with that one goal lead. They can just take it one period at a time from that point onwards. Vasiliev keeps looking up at the clock. He knows as well that he, too, has got to force his team to get the pace back in their favor. He knows that Canada have been slowing things down in their own end zone. His team is made up of five-man units primarily from three different teams in the first division. They've tried to keep lines intact, like the Moscow Dynamo line that's on the ice now of Borchevsky, Svetlov, and Seaman. It's the midterm break, if you will, in the first the first half of the Soviet season is over, and this is their midterm, and they have teams all over the country. In fact, they do it partly because I'm sure they want their teams to get better, like this Olympic team, but don't think the Soviets aren't making a few bucks in this. If you add up what the Soviets are making with their touring Super Series teams, Riga Dinamo and Red Army team and this team, and there was another tour in early December, the Soviets will go home in January with about a million dollars in their pocket, maybe claiming world hockey supremacy. Sure, they just shut down their league at home. I mean, they don't have any problems whatsoever doing that. Send their teams over here, collect the money, shut down their own league just for a while. All of Europe shuts down. It's not a bad deal, really. I mean, the, uh, some of the teams, like the Czech national team, has gone to France for a little R&R. &R, and, uh, some of the teams are in tournaments. Sometimes they pick up the, the uh, younger players and send them away. And it's, uh, it's a nice break for, the, for all the Europeans. I think the National Hockey League players would like to have a break as well, but I don't think they're going to talk the owners into it. Instead, they play extra games because they play the Soviets while they're on a break. <laughs> But their owners make a few bucks, too. Here's Svetlov on a breakaway. Scores! Sergei Svetlov ties the game 2-2. Well, Vasiliev was happy, but Dave King's not because Canada did exactly what they were trying not to. Svetlov just broke through the middle, and he's gone. Go with them. You're never going to catch a player like Svetlov yeah. unless you have got at least a, a pace on him, a good stride on him. So many uh, North American defensemen, maybe Paul Coffey and Ray Bork, that might be able to turn and catch him. Yep. We're into the last minute of the first period in a 2-2 tie. 
back to square one for the Canadians and must win by two. In some speed tests, by the way, a few years ago, Svetlov was the fastest skater in the Soviet Union. And they've sent him along in this tournament because he hasn't been playing extremely well, they said, so they didn't send him with the Red Army team or Riga Dynamo. So this might be deemed as a demotion for Svetlov to have to come along with the kids on the Olympic team. And he's not in the good books over there at all right now. Richard Haidu breaking for the net, spins around in the corner, into the slot, Streeby's shot was blocked. Todd Streeby with a chance, he's playing with Haidu and Nemeth in this last minute of the first period. Come the Soviets, German Titov takes the shot wide of the net. Leonov into check. There's a penalty coming up on the play. It'll be against the Soviets. Maslenikov will get a high-sticking penalty for the check on Todd Streeby in the corner. Well, we mentioned earlier, it was pretty obvious right from the initial going of this first period. This man was not going to allow sticks to get high at all. But that was pretty obvious that that one was right up in Streeby's face. We'll start the second period on the power play with just six seconds to go in the first period. It's really unusual, isn't it, to see this many penalties called in an international game, the ones I've been around most of the time. You see two penalties, maybe for the game. It's been a pile in the first period. Well, I think it shows also the type of competition that is going on right now between the Soviets and Canada. And Streeby is pretty upset right down by the players' bench. He was having some words with the Soviets. He didn't like that. And you have to remember again that this team has to win by two. So they've got to get some more behind Andrei Zuev in order to advance to the final against the Czechoslovakians on Sunday. Zuev is the Soviet goaltender. Warren Skorodinsky is the goaltender for Canada. The referee tonight is Brad Howard. He's called a lot of penalties. Ten minutes against the Soviets, eight against Canada, and there's a Soviet penalty to start this second period. Maslenikov is serving a penalty for high sticking, so Canada's on the power play to start the second. These are interesting uniforms the Soviets are wearing. They get they almost look fluorescent, don't they? they sh if they'd had these in the NHL the night the, the night the lights went out in Boston, they might have been able to play that game. <laughs> Fluorescent orange on them. I was shocked when they came out today for pre-game warm-up. Well, both the Czechs and the Soviets have very different, unusual uniforms. I think they're great. <laughs> that's, that's the definitive word from our fashion consultant. As Warren Skorodinsky makes a save. A minute and 20 seconds to go in the Soviet penalty. Canada's power play has Mark Juris up front. Along with Gary Emmons and Todd Streeby. Here's Streeby breaking over the line. He's checked by Matisse and a shot on goal. Zuev made a save on the shot by Juris. Matisse trying to clear the puck. Can't get it by Brian Tuck. Emmons locks one in the air. Here's Gord Hines. Streeby's pass rocketed right by Hines and down the ice. Juris has an NHL shot. That shot was labeled for the corner. It was a great, uh, great save by Zuev. 40 seconds left in the Soviet penalty. A 2-2 tie early in the second period. Here's Sergei Svetlov. He has a pair of goals in this game. Alexander Simak. Simak's the puck to the end boards. Steve Nemeth is back to collect the puck with 20 seconds left in the penalty. Nemeth flips the puck in on the fly. Penalty's almost over. Popekin is back to collect the puck. Evgeny Popekin got the puck down the ice. Meslenikov is out of the penalty box. And the Soviets are back at full strength. Chick. Albert Malgin 
up the ice. Here's Volstrikov into the middle. His shot was deflected to the end boards. Cleared around, but not out. Vasalgin kept it in. Kabartalnov couldn't get a shot away as he was stopped in the spot, and out comes Gord Hines, leading a rush. Tip from behind in the first period, seems to me that might have run a penalty. Soviets are two on one, right in front of the net, and they messed up the pass. Luckily for Canada, Vostrikov was in alone and couldn't handle the pass from Kabartalnov. Basalgan at the point, shot it in front. Ford Hines blocked the shot. Three minutes gone in the second period. Canada changing on the fly. Nikitin passed the puck up the middle to Leonov. His shot was blocked by Ken Lovson out of the University of Saskatchewan. Now to Dave Saunders. Breaking up the middle is Chris Draper. Saunders gets around Nikitin, or is trying to, as Nikitin takes the man. Saunders has been strong along the boards in tonight's game for the Canadians. Soviets are in the middle of a line change. Saunders is a big boy. Big and strong, and he's played that way on the boards. Made a great play on the goal by Mike Moeller. Former Vancouver Canuck, been released by that team, Dave Saunders. Number 27 for Team Canada just joined them for this tournament. Fedotov. Maslenikov, number 12, dumps the puck in. And Ken Lovson's back to collect four minutes into the second period. Skorodinsky's all on his own. It's one of the things you can do in international hockey when you're unsure of what to do and you're maybe not confident handling the puck. Drop on it. Wouldn't some NHL goalies that can't handle the puck love to be able to do that? Yeah, I think so. Night after night. It does slow the game down, but tonight, as we've told you many times in the first period, that will be in Canada's favor. No question that Canada wants to keep the game slow. And when it gets some good momentum going like it did then, they've got to slow it down. So it's a smart play by uh, Warren Skorodensky. Also, it gives Dave King a chance to get the matchups he wants. Sherry of off the draw, had the shot block. Canada is three on two to center. Evans to Mike Muller, he shoots. Suam makes the save and holds on. Canada with a three on two. Muller elected to shoot and Suam made the save. That's okay, Muller made the shot, but he knew that Emmons was heading straight for the net. Unfortunately for Emmons, Suam did not give up any type of a rebound. I think Muller was looking for that five hole. Once again, Canada broke out from a face-off in their own zone and almost had a, another goal. Now they'll try and win a face-off in the offensive zone. Emmons against Ariola. Emmons gets the draw. Brian Tut shoots. Blocked by Sergei Osipov and sent down the ice. Would have been a good place to use the boards. Kovalev took a shot that was blocked. Gary Oman is in to get the puck to Kovalev. Centering pass for Osipov. Now he's wrapping it around. And Warren Skorinetsky made the save. There's a shot they score, Sharian. The Soviets moved it around nicely and take a 3-2 lead. Uh, the goal by Valerie Sharian. Well, first of all, the Soviets tried the wraparound, and they were successful in doing that in the exhibition game in Prince Albert. You see, that was the initial scoring opportunity for the Soviets. Skorodensky played it pretty well. However, this tic-tac-toe play, good pass right across the seam. Skorodinsky didn't have time to get back across. And Canada's in a hole, needing a two-goal lead, needing a two-goal victory, is behind by one. Andersak in front of the net. Mark Juris trying to get the loose puck. Backhand shot by Wickenheiser is stopped at the side of the net. Andre Zuev, and he holds on. Wickenheiser was not in a great position because he was in so tight on Zuev that when that puck came, he really couldn't get into a position to get his blade on the puck. You can see that Juris was doing the work. You see, Wickenheiser had taken himself out of the play. Had he stood out in front of that crease, that puck would have come right to him. Kovalev and Ariomen 
didn't have assists on shifts. Sheriyev's goal is first in this tournament at 4.43. Soviet speed 3-2. Svetlov to Borshevsky. Simak goes for the net. Simak has the puck. He shoots it and Skoronetsky makes the save. And Warren will have to make some big saves now because Canada is behind by one. He may have to keep them in it while they get going again. We'll be back in Saskatchewan Place right after this. We're back at Saskatchewan Place where Canada is down 3-2 to the Soviets in the inaugural Saskatchewan Cup. Third game of the round robin. The Czechs are already in the final. Nemans won the draw for Canada. Make that Nemans. And Skordensky covers up at the side of the net. Warmed up considerably here today. It's been uh, blustery and cool down to minus 35 a couple of nights ago, but it's a balmy minus 19 today with a wind chill factor of 750 below. Certainly heading into the slot, and it costs Canada now. It's a 3-2 for Russia. And the Soviets are on a power play seven minutes into the second period. Up on the point, move the puck into German Tita. Asmenikov. Canada set up its four man box, but there's two men in front of the net. One right in front and one at the post. There's the shot, they score. It got to the spot where there were two Soviets. Redirected in, and it's 4 2. And they keep that puck along the ice so well that deflections are easy. Here's the shot. The Soviets just have lots of time setting up. They're patient, and Canada are not forcing. Canada go back into that small, tight box. And what it allows the Soviets to do, as they'd love to do, is take their time, set the play up, and then wait for the perfect opportunity when all of the teammates know exactly where that puck's going to go. Second power play goal of the night for the Soviets. German Titov from Igor Mastanikov. Time to go 7.23. Bonayankov, the defenseman, gets another assist on the play. That's Matitsin behind the play. He's down on the ice. And writhing in some pain as he pulls himself back up. Well, I don't even know how he got hurt, but it was way behind the play. Take a look at it. See whether or not we can find out. Oh, uh, Wickenheiser. That looks like a good old Charlie horse injury. Jack they hurt. Got a piece of this is a Soviet team doctor that is... Working on Andre Matitsin. Our camera is really in a hole now, down two goals. It's a very talented team, and Canada must win by two. Here's Alexander Simak, number 27, skating to center three on two. Borshevsky takes the shot. The puck bounced off the inboards wide. Gorodinsky comes out of his goal, clears the puck that out. Svetlov kept it in for Borshevsky. Spins around to get control. Borshevsky's going for the net. Svetlov's out front. The back pass to the point. Popikin shoots it. Blocked in front. Mikulchin. Shot the puck around on the boards. Nikolai Borshevsky. Sergei Svetlov. Checked by Saunders and knocked down. Borshevsky goes down. Here's Simak, number 27. Great control by this big line of the Soviets, and they're not on a power play. Off the end boards, Brian Tuck comes after the puck, and he'll alleviate the pressure by sending the puck down the ice. Canada will be called for icing. 11.08 to play in the second period. The Soviets have scored two in the second and are up by two over Canada in a game the Canadians have to win or this tournament is finished. Welcome back to Saskatchewan Place. This will host the Labatt Briar. It'll also host the Memorial Cup, and it's a terrific building for those events. And this one, 
Soviets leading Canada 4-2. to two. Host team in danger of being eliminated, setting up a Czechoslovakian Soviet Union final on New Year's Day. Steve Nemeth is in after the puck for Canada. To Todd Streeby. He's checked and Albert Malgin comes up. Two on two. He's got Kvartalnov with him. Andrasak takes the man nicely. Ian Boyce was back for the puck for Canada. Todd Streeby sends the puck down the ice and Basalgan is back for it. Albert Malgin to Sergei Vostrikov. Balgan checked by Streeby, brings the puck in offside. And Streeby has a few words for our man Albert Malgan. Albert Malgan is a goal scorer. He has only played six games, at least last year, in the elite division. He played in the first division where he scored 35 goals. And as we've seen out here tonight, he can really scoop. I don't know whether or not he's such a great playmaker. He seems to be more of an individual player. to clear the puck and it came out to Meslenikov and it deflects off a Canadian stick into the stands. Greener Canada's pitching in now something they didn't do in the first period and obviously Dave King has said hey we're down two we got to get four all together we've got to put on some more pressure so this could open things up for the Soviets but on the other hand it's going to give Canada a chance at least. Uh, that was nice cheap call as usual. <laughs> Way to go, Dave. <laughs> well, remember what Dave King said prior to the game, though, that if they have to open it up, it could be scary. Mike Bowles. Centering pass, and the net is knocked off its moorings. Did they give any of the broadcasters? <laughs> what are you going to take a picture of, Roger? We're afraid we might have to give you lessons in how to use it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Play a game on White. 22. Uh -huh. This guy's going to call a penalty now. Good discipline by Moeller. I mean, Moeller could have gone over and punched his lights out, but instead... He had a few words with him, went very casually over to pick up his stick. And Canada right now will take the power play. Watch it. Andre Matitsu knocks it out of his hands and gets a delay of game penalty. Looked like Moeller was holding out his stick and saying, here, <laughs> knock it out of my hand. Do you think he would have understood that, Roger? Here's our chance to get one back right here. Come on now. Canada's power play features Gary Emmons, Jeff Wenis up front, Mark Juris, James Gasso, and Adrian Plamson. And this power play needs to strike bad. It scored once. Canada's down 4-2 in the second half of the second period. and a give and go went for the front of the net now he goes to the end boards claps it fakes the shot into it his shot deflects into the stands the soviets are very aggressive on the points they come right out and and try to force canada right away to make quick play so they're trying to keep two men at the side and you saw the pass over over to uh, Juris there, and he brought it in well. It was a good play by Canada. But remember in the first period, when Canada had their power play opportunities, they really didn't waste a lot of time setting up. They were shooting away, going for the net, and looking for those rebounds. Gary Emmons and Vladimir Ariyoman on the faceoff. 
know if our Canadian team right now is skilled enough to be able to move the puck around and create a lot of great scoring opportunities on the power play. They haven't really been together that long. They're sure winning the faceoffs, though. Hammonds won that one cleanly. Trying to get the puck to Winnis at the side of the net, just failed. Winnis and Evans looking for the puck. Comes loose to James Gasso. Pass it, shoots, just wide of the net. Gasso pitches in. The Soviets get the puck outside the line with 1.15 to go in the penalty against Matitsin. It's a good example there, Greener, though, of what you were saying. They just couldn't quite make that pass across the crease. Adrian Plastic stick handles in, then lost the puck to Oleg Mikulchuk. He gave it away to Gary Emmons. Emmons to Mark Juris and back on the point. Plavsic over to Gord Hines. Plavsic again. There's a screen in front. Juris is in front of the net. Now Jeff Winnis has the puck. Gord Hines fakes the shot. Emmons shoots wide of the net. 30 seconds left in the penalty. Plavsic keeps the play on side. Winnis right in front. Juris shot off the goal post. Great play by Canada. They put it off the post. 20 seconds left in the power play. Seaman breaking in, short-handed. Now he loses the puck to Gord Hines, and Canada might get one last rush here on the power play. Up the middle to Gary Evans. Chris crosses with Mark Truitz. Dumps the puck in, and Canada will change on the fly. And as Zuev holds the puck, there's four seconds left in the penalty against the Soviets. Well, Canada had some good opportunities. Once again, their problem is finishing off. They have to work so hard in order to get that goal, it seems. Watch right in front of Zuev. Here's the best opportunity, except that by that time, Juris had taken himself so far out of the play, he had a bad, bad angle to shoot from. Well, Emmons made a good try. He got his foot on the puck, and uh, it just... Uh just went a little out of his reach, but uh, Canada really worked hard on that power play. They, they kept recovering the puck, and the, they keep working. They might be able to do it. Off the draw, they're still on the power play now. Matisse's out of the box and getting back in the play. The shot, they score! Chris Draper! He's a smart young kid. When he gets possession of that puck, now watch him. He's over to the right of your screen. He gets that pass from Tut. He didn't waste any time. He just shot it as soon as he got it. You can see Wickenheiser in front of the net. Wickenheiser's doing a good job, too. He's taking Zuev's attention. He's hanging with the Soviet defenseman, and that allowed he Draper to really tee it up. Time of the goal to make it four to three. Hines and Tut draw the assist at 12 away. Lord Hines is back. Canada must strike again. Again, they must win by two to make it to the final, and they're down by one. You know, that was the exact play, Jim, that Dave King outlined today to a clinic this afternoon on how they were going to try to score on the far play. It was picture perfect. Gordinsky's coming out of the net, and again, he'll hold on. You mentioned the clinic. There are about 40 or 50 coaches from across Canada in here. They only had to pay about 25 bucks and make their way to Saskatoon, and they've had a great clinic here for a few days with Guy Sharon and Dave King. For example, last night at the Czech-Soviet game, they had a little clinic before the game between each period to talk about the game. It's been great for the coaches. It was interesting that Vladimir Vasilyov, the Soviet coach, when asked about uh, what things they've taken from our game and what they're trying to do. He said, we're trying to have all our young kids play more physical. <laughs> about the opposite to us. Yeah. We're trying to get them to be a little more skilled. <laughs> There's a high sticking call. Coming against the Soviets, it's Sergei Vostrikov who's going to protest 
as he heads to the penalty box. It happened right at the Canadian bench as the puck was flipped in. Not sure who he came up against, but Postrakov has gone to the penalty box for high sticking. Well, let's watch it right here. Postrakov made the pass, and oh, then yeah. there it was. He got that stick up high, no question about it. Gave him a taste of salmon. He hit him in the face with a coho. <laughs> That's a BC joke of a mirror. Well, it's no joke right now for Dave King. They're down by one goal. However, at least they can chip away now. They don't have to be con so concerned about gambling. Assertive on the power play, boys. Keep being assertive with that puck. Battle for that baby. Gary Emmons working in the corner trying to get the puck. Now Mark Drews comes in. And the Soviets get a lucky bounce to clear it. You know, Dave King was saying exactly what you got to do on the power play. You can have all the nice plays, but you got to battle for the puck and get it. Yeah, exactly. The intensity level has got to be almost at a ferocious standard. Canada's got to get a little mean. They've got to win those battles in the corners and along the board. But at the same time, they can't take any penalties. Greener wants them to have a ferocious part. That's right. Get mean, Rod. Adrian Plasic for Mark Drews. Fedotov took the puck away and moves up the ice. 50 seconds left in the Soviet penalty. 5.50 left in the second period. Canada's down by one. Here's Steve Nemeth to the line. Juris tripped and was offside. Wickenheiser over the blue line. Turned back. Monaika shot the puck to center. Gord Hines moves it back in. Nemeth. His pass intercepted by Gehrman Tito. 25 seconds left to the penalty. <laughs> Doug Wickenheiser gains the blue line but lost the puck. Gord Hines to Todd Streeby into the middle. Shot it and had the shot clock. Mestenikov comes back for the Soviets. Penalty is over. The Soviets are back at full strength with five minutes left in the second period. And the Soviet Olympic team leading 4-3 over the Canadian Nationals. Osipov to Kovalev, number 15. Sharia moves up as well. Kovalev shoots. Skoronetsky the save. And the rebound is put over top of the net. And at a need stops like that. Skoro will have to be great. Osipov, back to the point. Sharier shot, big rebound. Poked away by Gord Hines down on his knees. It was Hines that took the high stick from Brostnikov, and he had to be patched up, but he's back out on the ice. The whole play started because Kanda got mixed up on their man assignment in their own end zone. The Soviets were weaving, crisscrossing, and it confused the Canadians in their own end zone. It's 4-3 for the Soviets, and for Canada in this game, it's like being down three goals right now. The task is a tough one. Well, Skorinevsky is doing his job right now. In the Canadians' attempt to come back, he at least made the initial save. He was right out to lunch on that one, though. He was down. It was fortunate it went over the net. But that one, Skorinevsky was able to do the splits and get his right pad on that puck. Good save by Skorinevsky. There's another icing call against the Soviets. The shots are 19-13 right now in favor of the Soviet Union. You know, it's really a shame. You got to feel sorry for these guys when they come over here. I mean, they're they're not really dressed well. They're in they're in kind of tattered um, uniforms. I mean, away from the ice, they're in blue jeans that are ripped. They're kind of in sweatsuit. They don't have any money. It's like it's not like the Canadians when we send our teams abroad. We usually dress them up and give them Canadian coats with maple leaves all over them. They don't get that. Plus, you're right. These guys don't get a penny. I mean, they can't buy a coffee in the airport. They can't buy anything. They're given no money. None. They take the phones away from them here. Not that they could do much except call home anyway. Take the mini bars out of their room. All oh, the luxury. 
battery. <laughs> yeah. Take the mini oh, bars out of your room. The mini bars. How could you do that? There's an offside call against Ken. I mean, just think about going out anywhere in this country, in our society, without a penny in your pocket and trying to do anything. But one thing that Alan Eagleson said was that, uh, like, he was proud to be a Canadian, but he had yet to meet a Russian who wasn't just as proud to be a Russian. And, you know, they seem to have a lot of uh, strong ties to home built into their system. And uh, the job you can't say that always about some of the other countries, particularly the Czechoslovakians. Uh, you know, they've had the Russians occupy them several times. Maybe they're not quite as proud as the Russians are. But one of the first things they try and do when they get here is sell you a sweatsuit or a hat or something to get some cash. They may be proud, but they're broke. Well, it's the Federation that gets all the money. They don't give much to these guys. Here's Ian Boyce for Team Canada. Centering pass, and it's knocked away from in front of the net. Steve Nemeth was bumped by Mulgan. Dave Saunders now. Trying to get the puck loose. Bostrikov up to center. Kvartalnov can't get away from the checking of Greg Andrasak. There's a steal by Kvartalnov. And Warren Skornensky had to be shot. Less than three minutes to go in the second period. Canada trailing by one, four, three, and must win by two. Clearing pass or shot didn't go off the glass. He went over it and into the stands, and that stops the play. 2.39 to go in the second period. Well, the Canadians can't let up right now. I mean, they've got to be smart in their own end zone. Remember a few giveaways in the initial period? And unfortunately, Loveson was one of the defensemen in the first period that gave up that puck. He did it again, and as a result, well, it could have been far more dangerous than it was. I'm sure Dave King would dearly like his team to strike right now before the end of this period and be at least on even terms going into the third. They're down by one. Gary Emmons, backhand shot. He put it over the net. Almost hit Todd Streeby. But he had a corner to shoot at up there and didn't miss by much. Leonov at center. A breakaway pass. Mastenikov shoots it. And Skoronetsky made the save, but there'll be a Canadian penalty for hooking on Maslenikov. And the Soviets will get a late second period power play. Well, Canada's retreating right now because the Soviets breaking out. And you can see, and unfortunately, Gasso got caught. That puck went right between his legs, and the Soviets had the opportunity. And that was the hooking call. And you could see the Soviet player really was right out of a good scoring position. Skorodensky had come out to cut down the play, so it was really pretty harmless. No, that's a D-man. Remind the D-man. See him outside. Come on, Red. Come on, Red. Come on, Red. Dave King's assistant coach, Guy Sharon. Sharon was a great finesse player when he played the National Hockey League, played and ended his career with the Washington Capitals. He was in one of the great trades, you know, in the early 70s when he was a Montreal Canadian. He and Mickey Redmond were part of the deal that brought Frank Mahovlich from Detroit to Montreal. Well, Guy's a really classy guy, and he presents a good image for Canada's Olympic team. He's a good communicator with the players, and he has really become a student of the game. It's almost at the professor stage now. I think it's a pretty good mixture, too. We've got King, who is so great defensively, and Sharon adds the offensive touch to this team. And then there's Dale Henwood, who's the goaltending coach that works with the team. Been around since 1983. The Soviets are on a power play. Vladimir Yediomin. Vaslenikov dumps it in. Osipov is on the way after the puck from the point. Mikulchik, McGuire, Popekin shot. Loose in front of the net is cleared away. Mike Muller dives but can't clear the puck. Sheriff moves in and shoots wide of the net. Sheriff, the very high scoring defenseman, in fact, was second in the league amongst defensemen to the great Fetisov last year. Mastenita moves up the right wing and is rubbed up by Greg Anderson. 
Andrew Sack sends the puck down the ice with 1.10 to play in the second period. 50 seconds to go in the penalty. Simak forced deep in his own zone. Evgeny Popekin rink wide to Alexander Simak. Simak goes for the net, shoots, Skoronetsky makes a nice save. Svetlov back on the point. Sherayev to Sergei Svetlov. Pinned to the boards by Lovsky. Borshevsky to Svetlov. Popika to Mikulchev. He shoots. Skoronetsky the save. A big rebound. Popika fires one. They score. Well, you could see it coming, couldn't you? The Soviets had enough good shooting opportunities. There's one of them, and Skorodensky was making the saves. He was doing his job, but all of a sudden there were just too many of them coming. Here he tries to move to his left. He gets up. He's standing in position, but he could not stop Popekin. Evgeny Popekin has his first goal of the night, a power play goal with Plavsikov for hooking. And the Canadians are down by two, but you might as well say down by four. They must win by two tonight. Borzhevsky and Mikulchik draw the assists of the goal by Popekin at 1930. Five seconds to go in the second period. You'll hear from Czechoslovakian coach and former NHLer Ivan Halinka in our second intermission with Jim Van Horn. Well, I wonder whether or not Dave King's ever employed a five-man in for checking system. If he hasn't, he better start. He's four goals down and in danger of being work, knocked work, out of guys. the Saskatchewan Cup. We'll be back with our second Come on intermission. Now. Let's go. Here we go. The Soviet Union's Olympic team leading Team Canada 5-3 in this round-robin game at the Saskatchewan Cup. Oh, my God, let's go now. Let's go. Right away, guys. Come on, 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 You know, Dave King uh, may not have a great team here right now, but his last team had a lot of great players in the NHL right now. Zalapsky, Burke, Yanni, Bradley, Joyce, somewhere he'll find the players in time for the Olympics. There may not be many from this team. You may see Chris Draper, you may see Adrian Platzik. They've announced attendance here tonight is 7,749. That's real close to a sellout, I would think. It's a Saskatchewan place to see Team Canada against the Soviet Union as there's some pushing and shoving here. No time for that right now for Team Canada. I mean, the Soviets, they can afford with a couple of goal lead to be the intimidators right now if they were so likely to be that. Canada's got to worry about one thing, and that's putting the puck in the net, shooting every chance they get. And they've got to pinch. They've got to start gambling offensively. Wickenheiser, Juris, and Saunders up front. Playing against Svetlov. See, here's the problem. Jim, the Soviets know exactly how to play this style. They know the defense want to pinch. They just leave their forwards out in the neutral ice area. Yep. Here's Svetlov. Borzhevsky's shot is blocked by Warren Skornik. Back on the point. Mikulchik to Borzhevsky. Mikulchik takes the shot. Skornik makes the save. And Svetlov and Wickenheiser get tied up. It's great the way the Soviets always take passes on the goal. And they're never standing still. They're always moving when they get their puck, when they get the puck. And of course, that gives them a great chance. Well, they can take the pressure off of their own end zone and start creating offensive opportunities for themselves, it seems, whenever they want. Skorodensky, from a bad angle, makes the save. But boy, it really seems as the Soviets, whenever they want to turn it on in this game, they can do it. Especially Svetlov. I think Svetlov is really a man amongst boys here in this tournament. He hasn't even broken a sweat and is the best player on the ice. Definitely in a class of his own. 
is in deep. Watch it, watch it. Come on, come on, go. Canadians trying to move the puck out. Brandy Simchuk with a 17-year-old. Soviets have the puck right in front. Skoransky makes a save. A bouncing puck in front of the goal. Plastic can't clear it. Now it's sent to the corner. Bartolda. Balgan shot. Off the glass and Basalgan keeps the puck in. To Screamy. Steve Nemeth now moves up, takes the shot, they rebound. Screamy couldn't put it in behind Zoo at the goaltender. Two minutes into the third period. Soviets lead five to three. Steve Nemeth. Centering pass picked off by the Soviets. They had five men back inside the base out circle. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Anderson to pick up the puck. That keeps it. As the puck picks up, Richard Hydu's shot in the back header is blocked by Suhan. Hydu intercepted a pass but couldn't control the puck. Here he to Kovalev. Couldn't center the puck for Osipov. Defenseman Sheriev is in deep. Kovalev. Tried to center, he was checked, and Gord Hines gets the puck. Chris Draper into the slot, was poke check. Backhand shot, moved out nicely by the goaltender Zua. Racing down the right wing is Kovalev at number 15. In on goal, Skoranitsky makes a nice save. That puck was lying right on the post. Gary Oman at the side of the net. And Skoros there again. Skoradensky is doing his job once again. He's played a pretty solid game for Canada tonight. Watch Skoradensky here. I mean, he doesn't make that initial move. He just stands his ground and waits for the Soviet player to shoot. Boy, that was a tricky shot. He was balancing that almost off of his hip, trying to keep the puck out of the net. Lumsden and Hines had a tough time on that two-on-two. -two. They just didn't read it well, and they both ended up taking the wrong man. And plus, Hines was tired, Rod. He had a tough time coming back. He's a good skater. He just didn't have enough yeah. gasoline left. Soviets won the draw. Fedotov's shot was blocked. They own out number 11. Lost the puck, but Fedotov keeps it in. Mike Bowen to Jeff Wenner. Ian Boyce is after the puck in the neutral zone. Boyce again in over the blue line. Jeff Winnis. Pass went off escape. Mike Muller gets the puck. Adrian Plastic shoots. Zuhaf made the save with his blocker. Maslenica. The on off at center. Pickpocketed by Ian Boyce, who dumps the puck into the Canadians, change in the fly. Four minutes gone in the third period. The Canadians are down by two, but must win by two, so they're really down by four. Best many got to Borshevsky, there to pick up the puck with Mark Juris. Juris number 19 to Doug Rickenheiser. Brian Tuck down the left side. Rickenheiser's shot was blocked. Tuck is in deep. And the net is pushed off its posts, and so the play is stopped. 15-34 to go in the third. The Soviets are up by a couple. We'll be back. Saskatchewan place after this. Jim Houston with Gary Green, Roger Nielsen, and Jim Van Horn. Welcome back to Saskatchewan place in Saskatoon and the Saskatchewan Cup. Canadians in four checking, leading goals back. Anderson on the end board. The centering pass didn't get out front. Here's Anderson. Takes the shot. Deflected wide. Sergei Svetlov down the right wing with Borshevsky and Seaman. Borshevsky. In the corner. 
Spins around against the puck to Seaman. Popekin shot and Skoranetsky makes the save. What a great little guy Borshevsky is. He just tears around all over the plate and you can't get the puck from him. Skoro stopped the play. We'll get out to Jim Van Horn. Jim? You know, with the uh, Soviets having a command of this game, you would think that there would be a lot of uh, smiling faces on the bench, but as you can see, there are a pretty staid bunch of guys. Talking to the interpreter prior to the game tonight, he mentioned that uh, when the players come over here, they are given absolutely nothing. They have no money, no spending money, no per diem at all. And uh, it's it's just really tough. They're not even allowed to have a beer after the game to celebrate the victory, so it sort of takes the fun out of the game. There are two men alone in front, and the Soviets are up by three. Dmitry Kvartalnov has given the Soviets a six to three lead. You see, the Canadian defenseman fell coming out of his own zone. Or I should say off of the boards, and that was Gordon Hines. And as a result, you can see Hines just to the left of your screen. He's down on one knee. And that just leaves a two on O. That's not what Skorodensky needed. Semchuk couldn't really get back there in time to help out. Vartalov, number 18, back in again. His pass to Bustrikov, tipped in front. Three chances, and they've scored again. This time, Albert Mulgan, and in 7-3, the Soviets in a row. It's unfortunate, because Canada played a great five minutes. They worked hard. They did all the things you said. Greener, they were pinching, taking the man, getting chances, and all of a sudden, two quick goals for the Soviets. Well, you see, Mulgan just put that puck in the net. Gasso coming back, but again, Canada didn't have any choice. As Jim said many times, even though being down by two goals at the time, they were down by four goals. So you've got no other option other than to continue to gamble and go for it. Just see what you can make of it. Two goals in uh, just over 30 seconds apart. Not even that. Like 18 seconds apart. Bartolnov from Bostrika up and Mulgan at 5.23. And then Mulgan from Bartolnov and Bostrika up at 5.41. And well, Dave King's team is way down. Remember this quote by Dave King prior to the game? If we get behind, we'll have to open up, and that could be scary. Scary it is. Dave King knows the Soviets very well. 7-3 to three right now for one reason and one reason only. Canada had to open up. Canadians have played a lot against the Soviets this year in the Asbestia tournament. They've played them on tours of the Soviet Union and of Canada. Coming into this game, there were four and 10 against Soviet opposition. It'll be four and 11 after tonight. Gary <laughs> Emmons, centering pass. Chris Traper couldn't get a good shot away. He's checked and knocked down in the corner by Fedotov. Fedotov is really working over Draper and Boyce with his stick, his elbows. A little chippiness in front of the net now, too. On Aikoff, and Evans got at it. You know, there was a time when Canadian teams could intimidate Soviet players, but that time is long past now. They're tough physically. Well, besides that, if Canada just opens up and plays an intimidating game, Raj, they're just going to sit in the penalty box and it's only going to make the score worse. The new young Soviet players seem to be a lot tougher. I think the first real tough team I saw from there was the 86 World Junior Champions in Hamilton, the team coached by Vasiliev, had six of the players on this team on it. And remember young Tatarinov and Fedotov was his partner. I mean, they became renowned for their chippiness and toughness in that tournament. up 
and out of play with 12.24 to go in the third period. So it looks like, in fact, it's very evident who will be a Soviet Czechoslovakian final on New Year's Day. And while we won't see the Canadian team, what we will see is probably a very quick and very fast-paced game. Hey, Jim, I'm glad you're calling that one because that's going to be an end-to-ender. Back and forth, these two teams, the Czechs and the Soviets, will put on a great show. Why don't we just uh, make a rule right now? We'll just call one team red, one team white, and that'd be... <laughs> Vladimir didn't look very happy back there. Hey, he's got a seven. Maybe he's worrying about the next game. You'd be just as happy if you could call them all Igor, too, wouldn't you? Vasilya never looks very happy, but he has reason to have a smile tonight. His team is up seven to three. Lots of time to go. We'll be back in just a minute. Saskatchewan plays in Saskatoon. Canadians down seven to three. Adrian Plantzik shoots the puck in off the face up. Evgeny Popikin up on the boards for Borchevsky. This line is head and shoulders, the best unit on the ice tonight. Borchevsky, Svetlov, and Cimac. Two of the three are national team members. And Borchevsky's not too bad either. Even though they got to get him a smaller uniform, this one just hangs off and it's so small. <laughs> Nickel Chicks clearing pass, cut off. Here's Jurek. Kind of wrapping around, up front it comes. Ken Lovson keeps the puck in. Jurek can't center for Wickenheiser. Korczewski intercepted a pass. Here's Svetlov. Point checked by Lovs. Wickenheiser gets the puck out. Igor Nikit. He's one of those players that was in the World Junior Championship in Hamilton in 86. Canadians intercept the pass, and a pass to Streeve was in turn intercepted by the Soviets. Wheels in his own zone. The long pass for Chris Draper, too far. Ten minutes to go. Ten and a half minutes to go, actually, in period number three. Rostrikov. His pass for Balgan. The back pass. For Salgan's shot. And a couple of chances, and Squirrel got a piece of that one. Sent it out of the park. Boy, as those plays open up, it seems that the Soviet passes are getting longer and longer. And it will give them more scoring opportunities yet. You can see right here that Skordensky just pulls that glove up and scoops the puck out of the air. But Canada right now in their own end zone are really standing around and they know the final outcome has already more or less been decided. The pace has slowed for Canada. A dejected Canadian bench. And they knew that it was going to be tough to win tonight. But one of the things about Dave King's teams, is even though they've lost some games to the Soviets, they're usually pretty close. One interesting stat tonight would be uh, passes completed. Yeah. Because uh, Canadian teams had a tough time. Looks like they're completing about maybe three out of five. The Soviets hardly ever make a bad pass. Yeah. Good point, Rod. They are very skilled. Wasn't Ivan Halinka that told you, as far as the Czechs go, that the young kids there play or practice three or four times to every game that they play, and when his son played in Vancouver, it was just the opposite? That's right. In Vancouver, they played three games, practiced once. It was the opposite in, at home in Czechoslovakia. Sergey Osipov. Rink wide, his pass was cut off. The Soviets are getting fancy now, but they're up by four goals. 
They're not letting up defensively, though. They're always back, picking up their man, looking for those loose pucks, cutting off passes. Canada's changing on the fly with nine minutes to go in the third period. There's a penalty coming up. It's to Moeller. He just dumped one of the Soviet players head first right into the boards in front of the Soviet bench. So the Soviets not only lead by four goals, but now they'll go to the power play as Moeller goes to the penalty box. Watch right to the left of your screen, folks. That's Moeller with the cross check. He sent the Soviet player just head first right into the boards. And as we kind of expected, about halfway through this period, we saw warming up on the bench, Shervikov, and either he had a bad case of the worms or I'll tell you, he was ready to play because he was bouncing around like crazy behind that bench. He was doing the jitterbug and he is just getting some extra work right now, possibly in preparation for him playing Sunday against Czechoslovakia. But Zuev has played pretty well tonight. Alexei Cherikov, now in goal, played for the Red Army last year, but he's back with Kimmich, one of the other teams in the first division this year. Cherikov played against Canada in a 5-4 Canadian win in an exhibition game at Prince Albert on Tuesday, and he wasn't very good. Soviet power play. Asletikov into the middle, and Leonov couldn't come up with a puck. And Doug Wickenheiser will draw a penalty. So that'll even things up. And the Soviets, Anatoly Fedotov, goes to the penalty box. Well, watch as Wickenheiser turns to head out with the puck. There's the hook. And he goes down hard, so that takes care of that. 11.41 is the time of the penalty. There's a minute and 24 seconds to go at Mike Bowler's penalty, and at the expiration of that, the Canadians will have a power play. Dave King's wondering if we can play straight time. <laughs> he wears two hats for this team. He's the coach, and he's disappointed about this loss, but he's also the general manager, and he has to think about this program supporting itself in a final on Sunday afternoon without the Canadians might mean about three or 4,000 people that might have been here that won't be here. Those two teams have no love lost for each other, though, and it'll be a chippy, yeah. tough game. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that one. They were fighting last night just to see which bench each team was going to take. That was prior to the Czech-Soviet game. Skoronetsky made a save on Leona. Five aside, Hawk. Scored high and stands this man up. Meslinikov took a shot that scored and he stopped. Nice moves by Adrian Plastic to get away from his man. Hines knocked down from behind. Tito right in front. Meslinikov can't get a handle on the puck all alone in front of the net. Soviets up 7 to 3, 720 to play in the third period and the game. Gentleman Tita back in his own zone. 15 seconds left in Mike Moeller's penalty. Canadians will get a power play of about 30 seconds long. Great passing and possession they practice. Moeller's out of the penalty box. Canadians are on the power play. Three on two at center. Lead pass for Gary Emmons. He chases it to the corner. In behind the net. Bowler can't control the puck. 20 seconds to go in the Soviet penalty. And the fans, like Korshevsky, being knocked down as Tuck takes the shot. Chervikov made the save. Got a piece of that. We go to Canada. be blistering a few of him and see if they can't put a couple by him. Soviet penalties over. They're back at full strength. Greg Anderson knocked down by Oleg Mikolchuk. And Alexei Chervikov, the new goaltender, is out to hold on to the puck. 6 Now well, the Soviets can dish it out as well as take it. 
And you can see right here, Mikkel Chuck ends up with a pretty good body check right on Greg Andersack. Andersack went down hard. No room on the bench for the goaltender who's worked all night to sit down even. Andre Zuev must stand and watch as Cherbakov is taken over. Well, they're allowed to dress 22 players in this tournament, and as a result, these benches weren't made for 22 players. The Canadian benches aren't made for those rosters, you're right. <laughs> He was knocked down behind the bench or behind the net, and he came back and got a man. Holy smoke, what's going on here? There's a question that begs an answer. Couldn't the guy afford to use the scoreboard? Soviet Union is leading Canada 7 to 3. The whole building is concerned about H.P. Davies and Heather. Maybe one of these nights. Some woman's gonna hold up one of those sheets right for you. What's the HB stand for, Harold Ballard? <laughs> <laughs> Four and a half minutes to go in the third period. I wonder if Heather will hold up the pillow slips later on with an answer. <laughs> Different. Juris really is a pretty good player. I mean, 
in the first game and again in tonight's game. Juris has made a lot of good plays. He's a pretty smart hockey player. Once again, like so many other players, Juris' problem seems to be maybe that of size. He's only about 175 pounds. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this game. Soviet seven, Canada three, and the Canadians go offside. That'd be quite a tour. Sorry, you're gonna go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think the Soviets are doing a little head hunting right now themselves. Yeah, everybody wants to get in a few shots. There'll be a tour coming up, and these guys will be involved in it. The Canadians and the Soviets will go barnstorming. First, it'll be the Czechs in Canada. They'll go to Rosetown, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, the Soviets and Canadians will go off to Swift Current, Regina, Dauphin, Manitoba, and Yorkton. So people across the prairies get lots of opportunity to have a look at this team. If you think it's a piece of cake playing for Canada's Olympic team, uh -huh. well, you're severely wrong because these guys put in a lot of miles. Night after night, town after town. And the Soviets will be right along with them. They play in bunches, too. They'll play two or three weeks, a lot of games. Then they take two weeks where they uh, try to regain. And they have a lot of time for practice. And they uh, get themselves back ready to go again. I guess this is because a lot of their hockey is all geared for tournament play. Sure, plus they get the touring team over here, and the Soviets are only going to be around for 10 days, so they put them to work every night. If they're going to take that money home, they're going to work for it. <laughs> Chris Draper is just getting a wealth of experience, isn't he? He's a young bubbly kid that is just having a great time playing for this Olympic team. And as you heard him tell Jim Van Horn, learning a lot. He's had greater times than tonight, and there will be others in the future that will be better than this. Canada won't go to the final of the tournament that it hosts. A minute and a half to go. Albert Mulligan. And the Soviets go offside. Sergei Vostrikov, this line of Vostrikov, Mulligan, and Bartolov plays together with Kimik in the first division, in fact, the elite division of the Soviet Union. As I said earlier, they've tried to take a line from each team, all of them the elite division teams. The average age of the team is 23, so it's a fairly young team, but they always seem to put some pretty good players on these touring teams, like the Spetlots, because they want to make sure they win while they're over. Well, Bostikov played for the national team in October when they were on tour. A lot of these guys out here right now their main ambition is to get on that national team. Tikhanov will have all eyes on these players. Well, C-Mac and Spetlov could play for any team in the world. You bet. There's a good hit thrown by Kovalev on Adrian Plancer. Good solid shoulder. 40 seconds. To go in the game, we'll have the players in the game immediately following this. I think Svetlov has a pretty good chance of being one of them. Twenty seconds to go. Brian Tuck. Greg Anderson. Over the blue line with 10 seconds left. The Soviets turn it up ice. They may get a shot here. Vasilenikov passed it off, and time will run up. The Soviet Union and Czechoslovakian Olympic teams will meet on Sunday afternoon in the championship final of the inaugural Saskatchewan Cup. Canada has been eliminated with two straight losses after a 7-3 loss to the Soviets here tonight. Well, I think you got to go back, Jim, to what Roger said at the start of the game, is that Canada's team is equivalent to a good American League team mid middle of the road. 
But meanwhile, the Soviets, this team that we saw out here tonight, could play in the National Hockey League without any trouble. Boy, it's tough when every night you have to be perfect in order to beat your opposition. And that's the position that Canada was in tonight, and they had to win by two goals. They lose by four. It may not have been a four-goal game had they played the tight defensive game that normally they play. But as you pointed out so many times, they had to open it up to try and score. Exactly. I think it may have well have ended up in a 6-4 hockey game or maybe even have stayed a 5-3 hockey game. Canada really worked pretty hard. And had they been able to play that defensive style of game, they would have been close. Probably wouldn't have won, but they would have been close. We're going to eavesdrop on the public address system here in the building now and pick up the post-game presentation. The game for each team will receive a compact Canon Sure Shot multi-tele fully automatic camera. Making the presentation of the Saskatchewan Cup Player of the Game Award to the Soviet Union Olympic team on behalf of Esso Petroleum Canada is Roman Kushnerik of Waka, Saskatchewan. The Saskatchewan Cup player of the game for the Soviet Union, number 16, Sergei Svetlov. <laughs> Making the presentation of the Saskatchewan Cup player of the game award to Canada's national hockey team on behalf of Labatt Breweries of Canada, is Mr. Harvey Nelson of Labatt's Saskatchewan Brewery. The Saskatchewan Cup player of the game for Team Canada, number seven, Adrian Plavsek. <laughs> the Canadian International Hockey Committee and their official sponsors, Labatt's, Esso, and Sport Canada, would like to thank you all very much for attending tonight's game and supporting Canada's national hockey team. So the Soviets and the Canadians shake hands and it's all over for Team Canada in this tournament, but the Soviets go on to play the Czechoslovakian Olympic team in the final and we'll show that to you on Sunday afternoon live from Saskatchewan Place. The final score tonight, 7-3 for the Soviets. We'll be back to wrap it up on our post-game show after this.